Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Grand Boof, the Big Feast. With myself, Cole Smithy, and my co-host, Mike Lacey. As always, we are here to copiously consume international politics and culture through the prism of a single film and a different craft beer each week. We're getting Hellenic this week. This is our first Greek film. Yorgos Lanthimos. I call it saying that right because we just had the computer tell us how to say it and it sounded just like that. That was great. I wonder, Mike, about this sea salt ale that you have brought us well, to drink. Well, uh, when, I, when I think of Greece as a place that I've studied extensively and never been to, I think of the mm. sweet breeze of the Mediterranean and mm. the salty air. And so uh, a sea salt air, though maybe not specifically Mediterranean, did give me a bit of a... A, a sense of place to a, a quirky blonde ale brewed with Atlantic sea salt, a Pilsner malt base paired with what is that word? Yeah, An anthonym. Oh, uh, oth- othanum. That's a tough word. To I pronounce. bet it's a Greek word. Othanum and citra hops, providing a citrus flavor. Let's uh, let's have a little toast yeah. here. Yeah. And we'll taste this lovely beverage. Mm. Mm. That's good. That's a that's a, a that's nice a little dry. Now, has, a, has a little dry I guess mouth I, feel. I guess I agree with that. But how do you t- tell when a liquid is dry? If you know what I mean. Well, do you ever have you ever drank tonic water? Yeah. You ever, you ever drink gin? Those are both dry. Those are dry things. Those are dry things, yeah. Do you think it like leaves your mouth more dry in a certain way? Like it, yeah. it, it, it wicks away the liquid? <laughs> it sort wicks of, away. It I, wicks it away? I don't think it wicks it away. It, it's just a... It, it, in the beer world, I, I believe it's a mouthfeel. It's a light, it's a light-bodied beer, but it's got a little malt, which I am a fan of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it stays a little frothy on the top. F- Fire Island Beer Company... The sea salt ale from Fire Island Beer Company, which we are going to be drinking, is only a 5.2 ABV, so a nice little session beer for our discussion, of Lorgos Lanthimos Dogtooth. Dogtooth. I heard a lot about... His first movie. I heard a lot about Dogtooth when his film The Lobster came out, and it was identified as from the guy who made Dogtooth, and I went around saying, yeah, Dogtooth, and so I'm glad you we were... were at Cannes the year that, that The Lobster... I was, what, what and it was, shown. it was a bit of a um, runaway hit, as much as the things that hit there a little there bit. There were a lot it's, of people who liked it. I yeah. didn't I didn't care for it. I have the same problem, really, with all of Yorgos Lanthimos films, which is that I think he comes in with a high concept, and the first act is really interesting, mm-hmm. and you think that this thing is, is going to really expand into something meaty. That's true to my experience with Lobster so far. And it does not do that if they, they they fall apart i think that alps his second movie is his is his best movie i thought that the third act of of the lobster was was weaker than this one i, I thought this one lands in lands in a, a dissonant note i'm excited to talk about movies that end the way that this does with a uh, tinge of ambiguity but i would say this one has more second act problems i i wanted to see more in the in the middle and see more diversity it's it's a bit of a bottle movie as we'll get into where you are stuck for the most part in a location and there can only be so many types of situations so i guess what happens is the only really terrible thing that can happen when you have a family living under one roof does happen so incest that's the one (laughs) (laughs) you know all the combinations that you can play with there's there's one thing you're not supposed to and they figured it out i think i just hit the sweet spot on my mic i don't think i was hitting it before i'm gonna readjust a little bit well all right so let's set up the movie a little bit um it's 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 a family there's a, a son and and two sisters although the and and they're in their 20s i'd say at least and uh it could be late 20s early. and and they and they they are led to believe that they have a brother who lives beyond their their gated home and they throw rocks over the fence at their at their brother and sometimes cake which 
I guess I couldn't see right now. Happened to me once when I lived in Mexico. Somebody threw cake at you? The kids next door threw cake at me and I found out who they were. They're actually the the children of the president's brother, the president of Mexico's brother, and he was in jail uh, for fixing the election and his kids in a very um, uh, uh, Marie Antoinette in way threw cake at me to like, I don't know, befriend me or mock me or something. Huh. But I'm just saying it happens. Weird things happen and weird things happen in, in, in this movie. So, all right. So we have the, the, this, patriarch of the family he's a, a a corporate guy who works for some manufacturing company we don't really know what they manufacture but it's a it's a factory of sorts and he goes to work every day the gate opens he drives his mercedes which i don't know if there's necessarily any if he's make if yorgos is making any commentary about Ger- Germ- germans German, yeah. or germanic ideas uh, the movie has i want to put it out there right away that it has aspirations toward ulrich seidel and michael Haneke and lars von trier Th- this guy is it, it, these are clearly his idols who he is attempting to if not emulate join their club Having seen two of his movies, I've seen this in The Lobster, I think a thing that he leans into a lot more in The Lobster is humor. And it's interesting watching in this order. I think I would have seen this one as being much darker than I perceived it, knowing that there are definite comic moments that he's doing and his portrayal of people may come from more of an absurdist place than a very intense character study of like traumatized. Well, I think, I think he, I think he breaks some, some rules of, of cinema and filmmaking that you really shouldn't break. Mm. And one of them is, is that the, the parents give their children disinformation. They'll call a clock, a lamp. I'm not, that's not, I'm not, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but that's the idea. The movie is, opens with this. And I found it very, a very simple and powerful device. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a good device, but it but it makes everybody unreliable, and it makes everything that is said unreliable. Because if people are calling a pussy a light, then a keyboard actually a keyboard. Sorry, a keyboard. Right, uh, and I don't mean a cat. Although there is a cat, and I have a problem with what happens to the cat in the, in the movie too. Well, I thought it was crazy they called the cat a cat. <laughs> yeah, they did. See, this is the thing, and so it sets you up to, to. So you're suspicious of every of every line of dialogue because it seems like uh, this is a, these people are a product of this patriarchal idea where. This father, who knows why he's running this experiment on his children? It's a very mean, mean thing to do to your kids that this guy is doing. But what happens to the cat is even meaner. And I have to say, the fact that it doesn't, this movie doesn't have the disclaimer that no animals were harmed in the making I of this don't film. Think a cat. I think that they killed a cat for this movie. I think it's a, a film from grease that didn't need to have that on it also it, no i think they killed a cat it's disturbing i, I don't think, think they, they kill- killed a cat i'm pretty sure they killed the cat do you think this movie has non-simulated sex and an actual cat being killed because that i would can't be- speak to the to, to the the simulation it does have sex whether that sex is simulated it is or on not. A, it is actually on a list a wikipedia list of films with non-simulated sex uh this movie they didn't specify which scene but i think it is definitely the uh the the scene towards the end, which we'll get into at length, but um, I mean, it depends on what you call some, what you call sex, point. because you know, if it, it, is 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 a woman giving a hand job sex? I think so. That's a great point. Um, yeah, I, I, I we'll get we'll get into it later. Let's let's keep going on um, the the nature of this family and whether this is an experiment or. Uh, a cult being run. It's never clear. We're never given backstory, which is interesting and kind of he's putting, he's doing that thing where people are living in a, a confusing world and he's entering the viewer into just as confusing ones. And we have to piece together what is real. Well, and what he's is not. Ta- well, he's taking uh, an active part in at least the son's sexuality because the father is the father. Yeah. Because he hires, the security guard from the factory where he works to come and service the son from time to time. And he 
he I, it's he pays her with things like perfume. He doesn't give her cash. It's a barter system, and the children have this understanding of bartering in in their relationships with each other. And so the security guard uh, discovers that the the boy I don't know, I dare not even call him a boy. He's a young man who doesn't doesn't want to perform cunnilingus so she goes to one of the sisters and gives her trades her a headband in in exchange for cunnilingus yeah she's sort of entering into the system and and she doesn't seem very concerned why there are these adults being kept in this this phony world and to flesh it out a little bit more there are a few lines that allude to the fact that there's germs everywhere, that the world is 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 dangerous and in fact infected. And then when when a cat sh- appears, and it, it seems like there's never been a cat before because yeah. they're not. If we haven't said it and you haven't seen it for some reason, these uh, these kids haven't um, ever watched television. They have no books. They have no exposure to the world outside of them. So it's, it's definitely, you know, it's made me th- think a lot about the, the cults that I've um, been like listening to some other podcasts about. And um, rarely you see someone do such a, a, a good job of insulating someone from the the real world. And it's a bit of a thought experiment of what would someone who grew up in that be like. And what's interesting and different than what you typically see in cults is the parents know they're fucking with the kids. They don't believe what they're saying. You know, typically when you have this like charismatic uh, leader, n- leader, this nutty guru, he at least is acts like he or she uh, is, is, is believing what they're saying. And they're usually mentally disturbed in some way so when they're talking about the spaceship from the clouds like the branch davidians the, these guys believe that bow yeah. Bo and peep who ran well, and also you, you don't you don't know what's really happening with the mother the, the, the mother the I, mother comes I, and goes that's, that's, a, the, that's david koresh the branch davidians that's, uh, but that's a yeah you are koresh that uh, please expect my apocryphy <laughs> uh they um the mother is oddly around and then not around. You don't know if she's just hanging out in the bedroom all the time. There, the kids are led to believe that airplanes fall from the sky. Can, yeah, and that's unpacked because I think it is a good example of the way that he's revealing information. The airplane falling thing. We, we early see them looking up at airplanes and being like, "Look, it's going to fall." And then they, so it's like, "Oh, these kids don't understand airplanes." Then later, it's there's a scene where the mom there there is an airplane flying overhead, and the mom has a toy airplane, and she throws it into the lawn, and the kids run after it. <laughs> it's so silly. So it's it's, it's this so weird silly. thing where it's like, oh, these kids are totally logical; they don't understand the world. And then later, you realize, no, they are perfectly intelligent. They are just accepting the world as it is presented to them. And like the tricks of language, where you're being taught words just mean other words. It is, I think, a thesis on how constructed our world is, how we are passive consumers in this uh, universe that feels real and determined to us, but is actually being constructed. There's, you know, there's clearly essays to be written about this movie. Did you find it compelling, Cole, in its uh, critique of the sort of the your world being sort of. framed well, you know, look here's it's an it's an allegory about homeschooling evidently because that's the closest analogy that you can draw sure yeah i thought of evangelical but kids, i think like, but i think that it, it's it's so bland that everyone dresses very bland and Lanthimos has a way of shooting everything to where everything looks dull. He's got a real eye for for dullness. Yeah, and I just find that dull. I just find <laughs> it boring. I don't like it. I don't care about it. And and here's here's another thing. You don't really have a protagonist in this movie. There's no one to root for because everyone's batshit crazy. So I was rooting for the cat. And we have the scene up right now where the cat's dead. And that's the same cat that we saw a second ago. That's, crawl, a, that's crawl, a stuffed cat. Crawling dude. around. That's not a real cat. That's a real cat. That's, I think he killed a cat is what is, I'm saying. This is Googleable. It's not I a real. I Googled it. I Googled What'd they it. say? Is it a real dead cat? There's no way. Well, anyway, if the, you know, we're looking at the, we're looking at the scene right now. And I'm going to move it back just a pinch and see... 
if we can div- divine whether this is a. So did you not find the um, the oldest daughter as uh, eventually emerging? I'll say eventually because I agree it's not from the beginning, but she becomes as the one escaping and sort of bursting at the seams of the reality. I don't think anything about her. I think after she hit her brother with the hammer. Why you know why why would I care about her? She has an awakening when she watches what we eventually figure out is Rocky. I thought it was Rocky and Flashdance. I think. Oh yeah, she must have seen Flashdance. Yeah, she does the Flashdance. Yeah, she does, dance, she dance. does the Flashdance flash dance. Right. Um, yeah, she gets exposed to uh, Hollywood via. All right, so there's that little kitty cat alive, and and in just a second you're going to see that little, that same little kitty cat dead. No. So remember what that kitty cat looks like. See that little cat right there? You're just talking to me right now. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm talking okay. to you. I'm talking to you. So what happens is this poor little cat, and he's very much alive. I, I presume that it's a boy cat. I don't know why. He looks like a boy. And in, and in a minute, you're going to see him not alive anymore. And so I... There's a cut. It's... Well, I'm not saying that you see the, the actual killing but you can very clearly tell that this cat that is deceased is the same one that you saw a second ago that wasn't are you familiar with props cole like it's they just i don't know look like he stabbed the cat right there did you see that it it looked like i agree i agree it looked like it that's why you get fake shears and you pretend to tackle it well, okay, so, well, listeners, what do you think? I'll just put it out there. You know, I don't really care what Google has to say about it. I I just found it, I found it gratuitous to kill the cat. Whether the cat really died or not, it looks like the cat is dead. It was a little too convincing for me. Maybe, maybe it was. But, you know, if the guy's, well, if the guy, if the guy's doing unsimulated sex, I, you know, then then maybe he really did kill a kitty cat. Real. That looks like a real dead kitty cat right I, there. I, and that's definitely the same I cat. Think, I think you owe a props department somebody a beer because they're getting you really hard. This is... A qu- okay, well, not a real it, cat. It's that looks like a real cat. I put it in. I I, I call it into question. Anyway, I th- I actually do think that the that the f- fur pattern does not match. I don't think that it looks like the same cat. See, that's either. why I, that's why I backed it up and, and yeah, showed and, it and to I you. looked and I don't think that I think that but the, see, the, I back, do. the back patch where it's white on the back. I think it was all black before. Okay, we're okay. gonna we're gonna we're gonna go back and look at that again because you are I, you are you interested? Uh, <laughs> I think this this to me is is the whole are you interested? This is the whole key to the movie. So are you interested thematically in the idea of someone killing a cat in the whole like save the cat screenwriting thing? I feel like we've been dancing around that. You know, the, this is the the screenwriting uh, sort of uh, pop psychology from uh, Blake Snyder, author of uh, Blank Check, which is that. If you have a character that's unlikable, you have them. Well, the cat's the most likable character in the whole movie. So right. When so you, the idea is, if you want to make a character likable, you just have them save. Okay, now a, look, a helpless now, animal. Now, 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 tell me that that's not the same pattern. Oh, that's a dead cat, dude. They really killed that cat. I can't support this film. I'm not saying anything about supporting the film. I'm saying I think they killed a cat for the movie. Uh, okay. Um, but it does go. It's it's funny because it kind of circles around. You're saying no one in this movie is likable. That's true. No one's uh, compelling. Emerges as a protagonist, and they uh, they quite literally. I think if you know if the guy hadn't killed the cat, maybe I could have been pulling for the guy. Dude, that cat doesn't move at all. It's a stuffed cat. Watch it. The cat. You can't jump at a cat with shears and have it not move. That's a stuffed cat. I dare you to try to jump on a cat that is looking at you. It is not possible. Yes, it Case is. closed. That's One not true. shooter. That's not true. You could jump on a cat. If he's not paying attention, maybe. You the cat's totally, looking in his eyes. You the can't, cat doesn't know what's, what's going on. Why is the cat going to run? Because you're right jumping on, at it with shears. You're no, a stranger. the cat doesn't know anything about that. If a cat that. doesn't do that, it deserves to go down. Okay, look. See the black chin? That's the exact same cat, and he did kill that they cat. They made a stuffed cat that looks no, like the cat. They didn't make a stuffed cat. That's a real cat. That's the fakest guts look. It's got like ketchup. It actually, I actually think that it looks very unrealistic and too unrealistic for for what it is. Well, I have to say, I disagree. And so, anyway, it, I just think that the, the movie is not compelling. It has a, it has a high ranking on on Rotten Tomatoes, so it, it does feed into some lowest common denominator factor. Well, I mean, this I mean this isn't like uh, the. Uh, a DC universe movie like there's there's certainly I think a lot of good things to be said about this and if, mm. why why do you think tell, tell them to me I'm curious so what do you think it's bland 
uh, and there's no protagonists. Um, the plot is, he's going for a surrealist tone. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you've seen surrealist films. You've seen that obscure object of desire and yeah. Ben Wells stuff. And this isn't anywhere close to that league. This is, this is student film land. Well, it's, you know, for what's worth it, it is his, his first film. And what is he, what do you think he's going for? I think he is going for something of a parable of, I think a, he, I of think, a dystopia and also not just, uh, showing. I think he's a, an exploitationist is what I think. I, I, I think all, I think all he's, I think he's a narcissist who really is just interested in his own. You hate this and, guy. You, yeah. You don't know that? Oh, Wow. This is my pick, by the way, you guys. Uh, getting around to it. Yeah, this is my, my roommate mentioned this is one oh, of I guess this is his second movie. What was his first movie? I don't know, but I'm 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 reading something that's calling that's calling this movie his sophomore film. Let's I'll look it up while while you expound. While, while I bloviate on this thing. <laughs> Just don't get any on me. Well, yeah, I've said as much as this, and I don't know if anything knew about it, and I agree I don't find it terribly compelling and it, it didn't stimulate tons of thoughts in me but i thought it did highlight how the world is very constructed around us and how easy it is to manipulate people um and it is playing with some filmmaking storytelling um norms which had results that are like pretty interesting um but you know ultimately what's it add up to and what it does add up to is the the oldest daughter after um being led to um engage in incest with her brother because it's making some sort of statement about that if you isolate and you isolate and you isolate you are needing to you'll start wind up uh, you'll cross the ultimate taboo I'm wondering, cool, if this is like we're missing the cultural context. If we're if we're not thinking about this as uh, something that to Greek people it being some sort of parallel to their political situation that would make this explode off the screen in a compelling way, and if the boringness is something about the banality of people sliding into isolationism and whatnot. But even you know, it, I think we're smart enough to plug that into like the political context and still also say it's not that uh, there's no protection. You know, and there's a reason why you want someone to be a hero. You're or breaking an laws of dramaturgy that are unbreakable. I mean, you know, you have to know what the rules are before you can break them. And this guy doesn't even know what the rules are. All right. So supposedly, uh, according to the BBFC website, the cat killing scene was fake. In their words, this film includes a sequence in which a cat is attacked with a pair of garden shears. Uh, we see an initial pounce as the cat is caught, followed by an aftermath, aftermath shot of the dead animal. In order to satisfy our obligations under the Cinematogra C Cinematograph Films Animals Act 1937, detailed assurances were sought from the filmmakers. These revealed that rubber shears were employed and that no animals were harmed. So that makes me feel at least better about having a watch it. A lot of people, by <laughs> the way, but a lot of people, by the way, did walk out after that scene. So really. Yeah, that's uh, in the forums. The people talk about walking out for that scene. So this is not his debut. Well, can, can, his, can, it's can, not his debut film, Canetta from 2005. And let me just give you the summary on Canetta. Uh, it's 95 minutes at a Greek hotel in the off season. A chambermaid, a man obsessed with BMW cars, and a photo store clerk attempt to film and photograph various badly reenacted struggles between a man and a woman. I thought you were gonna say like uh, like scenes of great battles or films or something, but that was sort of and with with cats. Yeah. Um, again, with the with the German uh, with the German, German automobiles. With the Ger yeah. With, so so maybe so maybe he is making some comment, some obscure commentary about Germany and his perceived. Maybe he wants to be he wants to be Austrian, and 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 make snide comments about Germany. Um, Austria, where where all where where well, I mean, where, where cool. the Nazis fam famously uh, escaped after after World War II, where they could a place where they could well, it's also where, where, they, it's, where they could live. It's also where, where they, Hitler was from, where they came from. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do think that there is a, a, p a political reading of this that we're a bit um, blind to. 
So let, let me pose this question. If your movie, let's let's give it the benefit of that. If your movie requires either a, a master's degree in European politics or to be from a given country, can it uh, ascend to being a great film? You don't even consider this a good film, so that's, it almost seems like a moot point. But if context is deeply important and it's not immediately universally likable, which is, I think, there's a reason why there are rules of dramaturgy and of like having uh, a well, likable look, you, protagonist. You have to, com- you know, this guy is playing in in the deep end, and if you're and if you're going to do that, you have to really bring it. And I don't care if you're if Dogtooth has a seven point three ranking on IMDb. This movie doesn't hold a candle to any of Lars von Trier's films, even his early ones. Or Michael Hanukkah, any of his early films, uh, or Ulrich Seidel. Well, I do think that his work with Lobster got stronger when he leaned into the absurd to humor casting. of this. That's the, the only casting. thing. That's the only thing that's making his movies but mainstream I, is that he's got Colin Farrell and and he used Rachel Weisz in. Uh, but I think there's a knowing the lobster. Now, now he has Nicole Kidman yeah. in the killing of a sacred deer, which I, I just reviewed but today. I, I think there's a knowing humor in the lobster and, um, that is completely absent in this, but, the, but no, it's, it's just, it's just present enough. The scene where you she's dancing, to, let me, let me tell like, you have to tell a story is the bottom line. You have yeah. to tell me a story and I don't really see the story here. I don't see the beginning. I don't see the middle and I don't see the end. And I suppose based on what happened in the end of this movie, the, 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 uh, you know, maybe he was sending out a message to car makers that they received because now if you're in the trunk of a car, <laughs> all of, cars made since 2012 have releases I, I in the about, trunk. I thought about that the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think that so that's, mission accomplished. If I, that was his goal, good job. I think that's I think that's uh, we're, so we're talking about where the the oldest daughter after she's. Uh, well, you don't have to spell that part out. It's just it is it's just something that happens. Well, there's there's a person in a trunk and well, they don't and they don't get out or they haven't gotten. Well, let out. me ask this because I alluded to it. There's it's it's real ambiguous what happens because you get to the end and it to to agree in a large part with what you're saying. I don't know exactly what the point of the story I was watching. So for it to end very uh, indefinitely with someone leaving a car and someone still in there in in the trunk and we're just sitting on it, it is a shot that I feel like should frame the story that I just saw. You know, that, that's I get that from well, Von Trier movies. Well, all, all, the movies all, you're, you all you're telling me in this story is that these these kids that have been raised so improperly and so irresponsibly are shocker not prepared for the real world they're weirdos <laughs> oh my god really that's how that turns out so maybe he's making a commentary that homes homeschooling sucks but if that's your premise i could have done that a lot better and with a lot more plot there's it's just a sketch of a plot it's not a rigorous movie that's the problem you know we were talking about people like hanukkah and von trier those people are really rigorous that they, they, they go to the mat when you come out of watching melancholia there's a fully form, formed thesis and storyline there and here you know if i watch the movie and i come out of it and i just don't care then Whatever thesis you went in with, it wasn't expressed. Well, let's compare it to Antichrist, which is a similar uh, bottle element to it. You know, we're sort mm-hmm. of, we're, we're, sorry, we're kind of, we're in a sense trapped uh, with two characters and we are not very clear on the reality we of know everything happening. about those characters. We know about, about their lives. We know who they are as people. We know how they got into this fix that they that they're in but there's there's and we and we see their we see their uh their descent into madness and i think that there's i i let, let, I, I think that i think that that lanthimos is confusing magical realism with surrealism i don't think he has any clue about how to draw those distinctions and how to work within that that realm again he's in a he's in over his head this is a guy who 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 is he's not doing his homework and he's getting he's getting a 
uh, praise for it. I, I don't buy it. I think let he's me, a phony. I think he's a hack. Let me finish my thought with, with the Antichrist comparison. Is, is that land somewhere ambiguous? It's not clear if there really are dead witches coming down well, from right. From and this there. is the right. And this is the magical realist aspect of Antichrist, where the there's the talking fox. Sure, chaos reigns. Um, but. I don't need to know the answer to that ambiguity to find many different interpretations. So I think ambiguity is helpful where there are multiple levels of interpretation of what I just saw. And it's frustrating because I don't know which one is right, but I have all these different theories. And if this means that, then that means that this, See, I don't have any, I don't, I don't have any theories is the thing I come away from with this movie. With this movie. I, I don't have, that, I don't have, that's I don't what, have that's what I was going to say is, is it's ambiguous. What, besides just telling a very specific story about what would happen if a father did this, I'm not sure why, this was being told. Um, another, another. I guess we're, we're we're shitting on the movie. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't fully expect to come in here critiquing it, but it, you know, you opened a can of worms. Why I opened the can of worms? How, how did I went with the can? What? Me? No, with 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 just uh, with with knocking the movie. I I will I will rejoin with um, the our one outside character is the security guard, and I find it maybe it's the point. But it's interesting, it's a little infuriating that she doesn't have any real critique on what's going on. She wants to take advantage of it. Yeah, you know, she's a, she's an she's, exploitationist too. Yeah, and maybe that's that's telling, but you want one character. You want one neighbor lady that comes in and brings reality knocking at the at the gate. Well, you need an empathetic character. You need a protagonist. You need and, someone to save a cat. And, I think we're just proving and, that and, stupid book Save the Cat, which well, I think about all day long. Well, the the and to me, the most horrifying scene in, in, the, in the movie is an act of physical abuse that the father, who is a detestable character. He's, he's really a vile, he's dictatorial. He's a bastard. Yeah. Is when, he's good. Let's, 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 is, let's, let's is, phrase is, it. That guy was really good at being a real terrible Oh, he's creepy. dickhead. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's Harvey Weinstein. When, when he, when he's he, Muammar Gaddafi. When he attacks the, the, the security guard with the VCR, uh, yeah. uh it's it, it it really to to me that that's the most dramatic other than the cat dying that's the most dramatic sequence in the movie and it just shows I, I don't it's it, I it's just an act of of, of unnecessary violence that I, I don't know why I had to be exposed to it you know you didn't earn my trust here's the thing we talk about like Alfred Hitch, Hitchcock is really big on this which is that you have to earn your audience's trust as a filmmaker. And you look at any Alfred Hitchcock movie, doesn't matter which one, and you know every step of the way that you are in the hands of a good filmmaker who is going to take you on this little journey and safely deposit you at the end. I never trusted this film. I don't trust this filmmaker. So you don't mean trust in the world that you're going to be safe or understand it. You mean that you he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing of authorship and a, a reason why you're going on this journey. He's just yeah. somebody who, who's for, for whatever reason has enough money to make movies and here that's, suck this. That's, that's a very extreme reaction I think I see someone experimenting, honing their chops and not having seen their most recent work, but I'm looking forward to, uh, and I know you, your review is out and you can read your review of the killing of a sacred deer. Uh, I'm, I'm hopefully that it was a prop deer, uh, <laughs> for your sake. There's no, there's no deer in that movie. Well, there's no animal. It's just like in this movie, there's no cat being killed. Um, but uh, well, I guess kudos. They're, they're, I guess kudos to 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 your ghost because he did a very convincing job with the killing of the cat. So he he does have he does have one filmmaking strength, which is that he can he can convincingly kill a cat on screen. Do you have anything to say about the incest scene? Uh, it's not. It's well again. It's not earned. You can see it coming from a mile away, but the effect of it, it doesn't. It doesn't really seem to affect the story in any way. It's just there. 
you see the parents decide that since they can't they can't have the the security guard they can't have the security guard come back because she's unreliable so oh there's only one choice to be made we can't keep hiring prostitutes with or bartering for prostitutes so now we're just going to have to have sex workers slash security guards yeah we're going to have to just choose he's going to have to choose which sister he's going to start making it with did you did you not think of um North Korea, in a way, in, in their obsession <laughs> with the, the North familial. and South Korea. And oh no, no, the I, DMZ. I, I just mean North Korea's obsession with the, their their patriarchy, matriarchy, and it's it's it gets to the point where you know it, I was stuck it is, on Germany with the Mercedes. Yeah, man. you know, um, royal incest is a real thing, um, uh-huh. and I was thinking that it's probably for similar issues. Is if you have, if you can justify uh, morally metaphysically having your family be like you know the trumps uh r- ruling all people and better than them then how could you justify them marrying anyone who's not uh royal and, and pure blood and so that's just you know it devolves into incest you know it's it's uh it's just you know it's it's i'm just saying don jr's lucky he didn't have to marry ivanka and uh, he probably would have been real freaked out if he saw this movie i'm just kidding he'd be excited Do- dog that. tooth is streaming on filmstruck with a lot of much better films that you might choose to watch instead of this one so shout out to Filmstruck, um, <laughs> where this is the only Yorgos Lanthimos film being shown on Filmstruck. Well, let's give it some credit. We 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 are uh, at least I chose this because he does have his new film out, The Killing of a Sacred Deer, which has been getting much uh, praise and um, hype and much undue praise and undue hype. Well, you know, clicks are clicks, Cole. So we gotta right. get people to be interested, listen to a thing. So thank you for coming, <laughs> pr- likely out of interest of. Seeing his new film and having heard that all of his films, including his latest one, suck according to Cole's. So no, I think Alps is his best movie. If I was going to re- refer anyone to see one of his movies, I would say Alps is the one. And thank you all very much for listening. Please go to colesmithy.com where you can see all of our archived episodes of the podcast. And you can also find the link to Patreon, or you can just Google Cole Smithy and Patreon, and you can help support us by pledging us five or ten or twenty dollars a month, or maybe if you're loaded, a thousand bucks a month. That'd be we'd, cool. We'd love you be a super duper pal, and you'll have all. There's all sorts of rewards, like you get to come on the podcast and drink a beer with us, and pick the movie, and all the fun stuff that happens in New York City here. Under the guise of La Grande Bouffe. Yeah, Cole, I'm, I'm sure you, you you want us to get us that yeah, Yurgo's money that you think he doesn't deserve. Why, why make him another movie? We just give us another season. <laughs> and please remember to turn your cell phones off when you're walking, driving, or riding a bicycle, or of course, watching a movie. <laughs>